I've been trying to create the ultimate basics of music theory video that's around 10 minutes long. I think I've done it with this. It may take a few viewings for you to really understand this. Intervals are the building blocks of polyphonic music. Each of the 12 intervals used in Western music have vastly different sound characteristics and must be committed both orally and visually to memory. There are two types of intervals. The first is the melodic interval. So that means one note played after the other as in a melody. So that would be a major third or the note C to E. That's a major third interval. If I play the notes simultaneously, that's called a harmonic interval. Think of it as a harmony. So both sounding at the same time. There are 12 intervals within the span of an octave, but many more interval names. I'll show you why. In Western music, intervals are described by two properties. The first being the quality, perfect, major, minor, augmented, or diminished. And the second is the number, unison, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and so on. These names describe not only the difference in semitones between the upper and lower notes, but also how the interval is spelled. The half step, also known as the semitone, is found on the piano between the notes B and C and E and F. The half step is the building block on which all larger intervals are built. There are two qualities of intervals, perfect and imperfect. Perfect intervals include the unison, fourth, fifth, and octave. Imperfect includes the seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths. Perfect intervals become augmented when enlarged by a half step and become diminished when reduced by a half step. Imperfect intervals become augmented when enlarged by a half step and become minor when reduced by a half step. Minor intervals become major when enlarged by a half step and become diminished when reduced by a half step. In order to accurately name the interval, you have to first figure out the number of letter names spanned. So if I have the notes C to F, that would be C, D, E, F, or some type of a fourth, four letter names spanned. If I have C to A, that's C, D, E, F, G, A, or six letter names spanned. Now we need to figure out whether the interval is major, minor, diminished, or augmented. This is done by figuring out the distance between the notes, meaning the number of half steps, as I stated earlier. If we have C to F, there are five half steps which makes this a perfect fourth interval. In the case of C to A, there are six letter names spanned, and there are also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine half steps spanned, and nine half steps is a major sixth interval. All of this is explained in the first chapter of my Beato book. The next thing you have to understand is what enharmonic intervals are. To the ear, this interval is a minor seventh, or the note B flat to A flat. But if I were to tell you, well, this is actually an augmented sixth, you say, what? Well, that's because this could actually be B flat to G sharp. So if you think about it, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, that's six letter names spanned instead of seven. So that would be an augmented sixth instead of a minor seventh. They sound the same, but they're named differently. Another example would be, let's say I have this note G flat and the note C. Well, there are five letter names spanned. G, F, E, D, C. Okay, so it's some type of a fifth. Well, that fifth is actually a diminished fifth. A regular fifth would be from C to G, but C to G flat is a diminished fifth. If I were to tell you that it's from F sharp to C, okay, F sharp and G flat are the same note to the ear, but they actually are different theoretically. So there are four note name spans, C, D, E, F. So it's actually an augmented fourth. Whether you have G flat to C or C up to F sharp, doesn't matter. There are six half steps between them. So you know it's either an augmented fourth or a diminished fifth. All the rest is just theory. To the ear, it's the same. These formulas just need to be memorized. And like I said, it's in the first chapter of my Beato book. Let's move on to chord construction next. Chord construction. The stacking of two third intervals produces triads. A major triad has a major third on the bottom and a minor third on the top. Between the two outer voices is a perfect fifth interval. 
A minor triad is just the reverse. It has a minor third on the bottom and a major third on top. The augmented triad is two major thirds stacked and the diminished triad is two minor thirds stacked. There are also a set of triads where the middle note of the chord is altered in some way. The first of these is a suspended four triad. That is a perfect fourth interval with a major second interval on top. Next is the Lydian triad, which has an augmented fourth interval with a minor second on top. We also have the suspended two triad, which is a major second interval on the bottom and a perfect fourth interval on top. And lastly, we have the Phrygian triad, which is a minor second on the bottom and an augmented fourth on the top. Next, we have the circle of fifths. This chart will help you figure out which notes are sharped or flatted in any given major or minor key. Every major key has a corresponding relative minor key whose tonic is located a minor third below the root of the major key. This is also true in reverse. Every minor key has a relative major key that's located a minor third above. In each case, they both share the same key signature. For example, the key of G and the key of E minor both have one sharp, which is F sharp. Or the key of E flat major and C minor both share the same key signature, which has three flats, B flat, E flat, and A flat. Sharps appear in key signatures in a specific order, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, and B sharp. Just like sharps, flats appear in a specific order as well. It happens to be the reverse order of the sharps, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, and F flat. Next, we have ear training. Ear training is one of the most important skills to develop as a musician. Relative pitch, which is identifying an interval based on a reference tone, can be developed to such a high level that it is indistinguishable from perfect pitch. I'm gonna start with a reference tone C. Here we go. D, B flat, C, G, A flat, D, B flat, B, F, a flat, C, G, B, F sharp, E, D, C, G, E, A, F sharp, D, E flat, B flat, F, A flat, E, C, E flat. What I'm demonstrating there is just one interval to the next. So when you see me do my Spotify top 10 countdowns, it doesn't matter what the genre of music is. I hear a chord progression or a melody, and I just recognize if it's, let's say, C, A minor, F, G, I hear the bass note moving from C down to A, which is a minor third down, then I hear a major third down to F, then I hear a major second up to G. It doesn't matter what key it is, I just recognize those intervals. Then I think to myself, well, the first chord, well, that's a major chord. The second chord's a minor chord. Third and fourth chord are major chords. But they can also be sus four chords or minor seven flat five chords or dominant seven flat nine chords or augmented chords. It doesn't matter because I've also developed a vocabulary of recognized sounds. Or let's say I have a melody, da, 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 something simple like that. I hear da, da, perfect fifth. Then up a step, major second, da, then down a major third, da. So C, G, A, F. It's all the same. Melodies, chords, chord progressions. You can do this yourself by practicing every day. I begin each day by practicing intervals. I work on triads. I work on seventh chords. I work on added note chords. All of these are included in the Beato Ear Training Method. You can check it out through my website at www.rickbeato.com. Thanks for watching.